If you're a creative professional, you know just how important your online portfolio can be to your business. And if you're creating a lot of different projects showing your work, it can be really time consuming having to brand all of those individually to make sure that it matches your online presence. Today, I'm gonna show you how you can use dynamic content to make your project pages match your online portfolio. All right, let's get into it. For this design, we're going to be using dynamic content to create a template for our project pages. We want multiple photos to dynamically populate, so we're going to use the Advanced Custom Fields plugin to accomplish this. From your WordPress dashboard, navigate to the plugin settings and click Add New. Then just simply search for Advanced Custom Fields plugin and then install. Then once that's installed, just go to your plugins, go to your Advanced Custom Fields, and activate it. And now we just need to open the advanced custom field settings and add a new field group. Under the field group title, we're gonna make this project. For the field label, we're gonna put client name. And for the field name, we're gonna do client underscore name. And then under our settings down here for location rules, we wanna make sure it has post type is equal to, and then we're gonna change this to project. Now we're gonna make a few more fields here. The next one we're gonna make is gonna be a number. This will be project year. We're gonna make a text field called deliverables. We're gonna make a text area field called project description. We're gonna make an image field called image one. We're gonna repeat this for image two, three, and four. We're gonna make a text area field called about text, a text area field called testimonial text, a text field called testimonial name, a text field called testimonial job, and one more image field. And this will be image five. So let's go ahead and save these changes. And you can see we have these 13 different fields under our project group. Now let's get started with designing our portfolio page. We'll start with a pre-made landing page and add a filterable portfolio module to it. So I'm gonna add a new page called portfolio. And today I'm gonna to be using the print designer layout pack. There's a link in the description below to download this for yourself. So I'm gonna browse for that. I already have it installed. And I'm gonna use the print designer landing page. And now we're ready to build our design. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna add the filterable portfolio right here. So I'm gonna add a new section right here below this little desk image. It's gonna be a regular section. I'm gonna add a single row and I'm gonna look for the filterable portfolio. Now that we have the filterable portfolio here, I'm gonna change the section settings to add a background color. So I'm just gonna change this here. I'm gonna use this nice color here to match our website's branding. So let's save that. And now I wanna change the actual module settings for the filterable portfolio. And I'm gonna change the post count from 10. I'm gonna change this to six. Then I'm gonna to go to the elements and under show title, show categories and show pagination, I'm gonna have title to no, categories to no, and I'm gonna leave the pagination to yes. Then I'm gonna to go to design where it has layout. I'm gonna change this from full width to grid. And then we're gonna go down to overlay. I'm gonna make sure the zoom icon color is set to white. And then for the hover overlay color, I'm gonna change this here. And if you want all the exact colors I'm using, again, you can go check out the blog post in the description below. And then we can change the hover icon as well. And I'm gonna use the plus. Now you can see as I hover over the portfolio, that icons are gonna display. Now I'm gonna to go to the image settings and I'm gonna add an image box shadow. This will help them pop out from the background a little bit. And then I'm gonna change the filter criteria text. I'm gonna change the filter criteria font we're gonna change this to the font of enter. I'm gonna change the font weight to light. And I'm gonna change the filter criteria text color to just a solid black. Now I'm gonna go down to the pagination text and I'm gonna change these settings as well. I'm gonna change the font also to enter like we did above. We're gonna change the font weight to light again. And same thing, I'm gonna just make the text a solid black. So now we want the active portfolio filter and the active page color to be a different color than the rest of the text. So we're gonna to go to the advanced tab and add some CSS. So under custom CSS, we're gonna go down to where it says active portfolio filter. And I'm just gonna paste in my CSS right here. And then under pagination active page, I'm gonna paste in this CSS as well right there. So now let's go ahead and save this. I'm gonna save these changes and let's check out what that looks like. Now let's create the template for our project pages. To do this, we will use Divi's theme builder. So from your WordPress dashboard, go down to Divi and theme builder, and we're gonna build a new template here. And then we're gonna scroll down to where it says projects, and we're gonna make sure this is on all projects. Then we're gonna create the template, 
Then we'll add a custom body and click build custom body. So first we're gonna add a full width section to the page and we're gonna add a full width header. Now open the header settings. We want the title of this page to dynamically populate based on the title of the project. So next to the title, we'll click the dynamic content icon and we'll change this to post slash archive title. So now we'll just remove the text here from button one and from the body text. And then under background, we're gonna remove this background color here. So now we wanna add a dynamic background image. So to do this under background where we're at, we're gonna to go to background image and where we have add background image, we're gonna use dynamic content. And we're gonna change this to featured image. Now under the design tab, we're gonna to go to layout and we're gonna set the text alignment to centered and we're gonna make this full screen. Now I'm gonna adjust the title text settings. We're gonna use the same font we used before and that's enter. For the font weight here, I'm gonna use bold and I'm gonna change this to white. So now I can increase the title text size a bit I'm gonna change this up to about 90 pixels or so. And I'm gonna change the line height to 1.1 EM. Then I'm gonna raise the title line height a bit. I'll change this to about 1.5 EM. Then in the overlay settings, I can change a background overlay color. Then I'm gonna add this. And that should be good for our full width header settings. So I'm gonna save that. And then now we're just gonna move this section to the top of our page. So now we're gonna open the section settings for the empty regular section on the page and set a background color. So we're gonna set open up our section settings under background, I'm gonna add a background color here. Then I'm gonna save that. And then I'm gonna add a row with two columns. For the column on the left, I'm gonna add a text module. Then we're gonna replace the body here with some dynamic content. So again, click use dynamic content, and then we're gonna go and use the project year that we created earlier. Then I'm gonna to go to the design tab and customize the font a bit. So under text, we're gonna use the same enter font we've been using. For the font weight, I'm gonna to go to light. And for the color, I'm gonna make this black. And then for the text size, I'm gonna increase this to about 24 pixels. And for the line height, I'm gonna move this down to about one EM. Then I'm gonna go down to where it has spacing. And under the margin, I'm gonna add a little bit of margin here, just about 10 pixels. So let's go ahead and save that. Then what we're gonna do here is actually duplicate this module. So if you click duplicate module, you can see that duplicates that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the dynamic text for this as well, but instead of project year, we're gonna change that. And we'll make this one client name. And now you can see it kept all of the branding styles that we used before for project year, but now for our client name. Now we're gonna repeat that same process again for deliverables. So we'll duplicate this, we'll adjust this, copy this, and then for the dynamic content, we're gonna make this deliverables. We're gonna duplicate this again. And for this, we're gonna make this our project description. So let's customize this. I'm gonna delete this, change the dynamic text again. This is gonna be project description. But I want this to be a little smaller than the deliverables. So I'm gonna to go to the design tab. Under text, I'm gonna change the text size and just make that a little smaller, something about 14 pixels. And then I'm gonna save this. And then on this right column we have, we're gonna add an image module. So let's go ahead and search for image. So since we want this to be dynamic content as well, we're gonna delete this. We're gonna use the dynamic content and we're gonna use the image one that we created. So now let's move on to the about section. So we're gonna add a new regular section to the page. And then we're gonna change the background color here. So we're gonna open up the section settings. Background, and we're gonna change the background color. You can see that I use a little lighter color than the one above it. I'm gonna save this. Then we're gonna add a row with two columns. And for here on the left, I'm gonna add an image. We want this to be populated with dynamic content again, so we'll delete, use dynamic content, and I'm gonna use image two. And we'll save that. And then on the right, we're gonna add a text module. So I'll we'll change that to text. We're gonna change the body to a heading two, and we're gonna just make this about. And then under design, we're gonna make our font match the rest of our site. So we're gonna change this to enter, the font color black. And then I'm gonna increase the font size a bit. Okay, and that should be good, so we'll save that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this project description that we made and we're gonna duplicate this. And then I'm actually just gonna drag this underneath this about section that we have. And then we'll change the dynamic content that we have. So we're gonna open up this setting and we're gonna change this dynamic content with the about text. And then we'll save that. And now we're gonna add a row with two columns to this page. On the left one, we're gonna add an image. And then this one, we're gonna dynamically populate with image three. So use dynamic, image three. And then under the design tab, I'm gonna to go to sizing. 
And where it has forceful width, I'm gonna change this to yes. Then I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna do the same steps for the image on the right. So I'm gonna change this to image. But this is gonna be dynamic content with image four. We're gonna to go to design, sizing, and forceful width on this as well. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the row settings. So we're gonna open up our row settings here and then go to design tab and open up sizing. And where it has used custom gutter width, we're gonna change this to yes. We're gonna make this a gutter width of one with 100%. And we're gonna change the max width to 100 VW. Now let's add the testimonial section. So we're gonna add another row. This is gonna be a single column row. And then we're gonna look for the testimonial. We're gonna add the testimonial module here. And for this, we're gonna use dynamic content as well for all of our fields. So under the author, we're gonna change this using our dynamic content. This will be the testimonial name. For the job title, we're gonna change this to the testimonial job. For the company, we're gonna change this to the client name. And then for the body, we're gonna change this to testimonial text. So now you can see over here that all of that is now populated with dynamic content. And then under image, we're gonna just delete this image here. And then we can customize our quote icon under design. Quote icon, we'll make the quote icon color black. And then for the quote icon background color, I'm gonna replace this with the custom color that we wanna use. So now you see it matches our page a lot better. Next, we can modify our body text here and we'll change the font again using enter, font weight of light, and we'll change the text color to black. We can increase that body text a little bit. We're gonna do the same for author text and I'm gonna change this one to bold, make it black. And then we're gonna change the position text using the same thing, enter and light. We're gonna change the company text. And then finally, we're gonna add a box shadow to this using a nice subtle box shadow. Now we can go ahead and save these settings. And now what we wanna do is add a full width image to the page. Let's add a full width section. We're gonna make this an image. And using our dynamic content, we're gonna use this as image five. And we can save this. So now that our dynamic content has been laid out, there's a couple of call to action sections that we're gonna copy and modify from the portfolio page. So go back to your visual builder for the portfolio page we made, and we're gonna scroll down to the bottom of the page. Here we have a custom designs and commission section. So let's enable the visual builder, and we're gonna copy this section here. So we're gonna to go to the section itself, click the little three dots here, and we're gonna copy this section. We're gonna go back to our page template that we created, and we're gonna paste the custom designs and commission section that we copied. And we're just gonna paste that section. So now we're gonna adjust this a little bit. So we're gonna to go to the section settings, and we're gonna change the background color. And I'm gonna change that here. And then we're gonna save that. We're gonna change the text here and we're gonna change the text color for this custom designs and commission section. So I'm gonna to go to the module settings here. Under design, we're gonna to go to heading text and change the heading to text. And we're gonna change this to white. And we're gonna do the same for the body text as well. So we're gonna change this body text module, design, text, and I'm gonna change this to white as well. And I'm gonna save that. So now we're gonna kind of duplicate this process again. So we're gonna to go to our portfolio page where we have the free matting on orders of four or more prints. So we're gonna copy the section, go back to our project template, and we're gonna paste that below on the bottom. So now we're gonna adjust this a bit. Let's open up the call to action settings here. We're gonna adjust this and we're gonna change the title. I'm gonna change it to say shop my latest prints. And the button's gonna be shop now. I'm gonna save that. And now we're gonna open up the row settings. We're gonna adjust the second column settings here and I'm gonna change the background color. And I'm gonna change that here to this orange color. And now we're gonna go back and we're also gonna copy the footer section and do the same thing. So let's go to our footer section and we're gonna copy this section as well. It's the same thing, copy section, go back to our project template and we're gonna paste that section on the bottom. So now we have this project template finalized and ready to go. So now that that's all done and set up, what I can do is I can create a new project and I've just filled in a test project for you here. You can create a new one and let's see what that looks like. So here's our new project and you can see it matches all of the branding that we've already created. And it flows really nicely. And then that should match our portfolio page that we already had. And you can see that our project pages automatically fill with dynamic content to match our portfolio. And this will work with every new project that we make.
All right, and there you have it. Now, every time you make a new project, it's gonna match the branding that we set up and use dynamic content to do so. I know we covered a lot today, so make sure you look at the blog article that's linked in the description below. It's very in-depth and goes over all of the steps that I highlighted today, and I definitely recommend giving it a look. It also has all of the resources that we used, including the layout. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to check out some of our other videos we have on YouTube as well. We have a lot of different guides and tons of content for you, and we'll see you in the next one.